Hi everyone, it's Marla. Thank you for joining me once again. So we're gonna do a pick a card reading today. And well, the first thing I wanna say is this is a timeless reading. All my pick a card readings are timeless. Um, actually, any of my readings are timeless and I get comments all the time from people that watch things I posted a few years ago and it resonates now. And that's cause we're all in a little bit, you know, staggered journey. But anyways, um, while it's a timeless reading, I am recording this for Valentine's Day and we're in the middle of the 2222 gateway. And so there's a lot of things happening. So what I would like to do today is a very detailed reading for you and your person and also an extended reading. So if your reading is resonating with you, um, check the link back to Vimeo where you can purchase an extended reading and I'm hoping to do a whole another sacred union reading for the two of you um, over on Vimeo. So today I have three lovers for you to pick from because it is Valentine's Day. And the first one is Isis and Osiris. Then in the middle we have Cupid and Psyche. Again, very appropriate for Valentine's Day. And then Tristan and Isolde. So pick which lover you resonate with most and check the description box for the links to the reading. So if you chose number one, Isis and Osiris, this is going to be your reading. Just take a moment right now to think about your person and set the intention that you are going to get the message that you need regarding your person. Okay, here are the cards for number one. As I said, this is going to be a very in-depth reading and hopefully you're gonna be able to see the cards okay. But we're gonna start here. And this is about your person's true feelings towards you right now. And we have the Two of Cups. This is actually Tristan and Isolt on this card. So this person is actually feeling a lot of connection with you right now. They're feeling very emotional. Um, this is one of the cards that definitely represents soulmates or twin flames, your divine counterpart. And, you know, the way I see the Two of Cups is this is a very elevated connection, not just with a lot of emotion connected to it, but a very spiritual connection. So I feel like your person is seeing you has their other half. But what's interesting, we have a few things here on this card. First of all, one cup is spilled over and that's at the feet of the divine masculine or the masculine energy. So I feel like for a lot of you watching this, you're probably resonating as a divine feminine and there's something that your masculine is still working on. And we also have this thunder in the background. So, or I should say lightning. Now that can be connected to the strong emotions that's going on here, but it could also be talking about something going on in their life. In fact, it looks like the trees are getting blown around too. So let's see what the rest of the cards say. Now what challenges this person about your connection right now is I'm afraid you're going to meet someone else before I'm ready to be with you for good. Okay, well actually this kind of makes sense with what I was just saying about this card and the lightning and kind of this storm energy. Because I feel like your person is worried that you're going to move on. So chances are you're either in some kind of separation or if you're in a relationship where you have physical connection every day, then maybe there's some emotional upsets or triggers that are going on in your relationship right now because 
I feel like those tumbling emotions in the Two of Cups card has to do with your person being afraid that you're going to move on and you're going to walk away from them. So there's definitely some fear here in regards to that. Now, what is your past life energy that's coming through right now? The first card is forgiveness. Um, I'm going to actually pull all three. I pulled three cards here. We have forgiveness. We have triumph and love like ours can change the world in regards to your past life connection here. So we have a lot of love here. We've got two couples embracing. Um, triumph. I feel like there has to be a surrender here. There has to be a let go, a trust. I feel like your person is working on trust. Now this could be connected to your past lives connection, but I feel like there's some things here with your person about other relationships as well, and they need to forgive those relationships. I feel like this person definitely recognizes you from some kind of past life connection. And I feel like they recognize that there's some kind of purpose here for your connection. That they have to rise higher. But yeah, this forgiveness card I'm feeling has like a surrender, a letting go, an ascension because we have these doves flying. And you know what's interesting? Actually, I pulled this card first and then I pulled this card and then I said, oh, let's just pull one from here too. And look at the similarity of these images. They both have the world. They both have like space and two couples embracing. So, I mean, there's definitely a message here coming through. And I feel like, you know, as part of a spiritual journey and a divine connection, you definitely have to learn forgiveness. And part of that forgiveness is about raising the energy of the planet and healing the planet and healing the divine masculine and feminine. So this is definitely coming through in this reading for you and that your person is aware of these things as well. And I feel like perhaps your person is even under a little bit of pressure because they are becoming more and more aware that there's a purpose to this connection and that they need to take some kind of responsibility towards this connection and they haven't probably done that so far. So what has this person been healing? Balance. Okay, so this person has been working on their own inner state of balance, the balance of the masculine and feminine within them. And I'm also feeling like they're learning how to support you. So if they're not there with you right now, it may have been because when you met this person, they didn't they didn't know how to support you. Like they hadn't learned that. They hadn't gotten that far in life. Like the relationships that they have had in the past, um, they, they didn't teach this person that, or I hope you see where I'm going <laughs> with this. <laughs> they weren't ready to be your true partner. And probably you weren't ready in some way either at the time that the two of you met. So, as I said, I feel like a lot of you, you that chose number one are going to be in separation. And this person has been doing a lot of inner work so that they can really learn how to be your anchor. And that, 
again, is very much the divine masculine, divine feminine way. So if you're watching this and you resonate as the divine feminine, then you probably understand that you need a divine masculine that can ground you and anchor your energy. And that's how you create balance within your physical selves in this reality. So, you know, focus on that. Focus on the fact that your person, they haven't just abandoned you, but they've been learning how to be the right partner for you. Also, as far as what they're healing is union is an energy, not a physical construct. Even when we aren't together, I feel our union. So yeah, there's definitely the spiritual energy coming through. This person is learning about their spiritual self. They're learning about the spiritual connection that you share. And I feel like they're saying that some of the things that they've been learning has been energetic. So your person has been supporting your energy. They've been anchoring your energy, even though you don't realize it. So those of you that have been on the Twin Flame journey for a while, you probably know that a lot of times the, the Divine Masculine Twin is more 3D focused because they are being the anchor for the Divine Feminine so that she can rise but this is kind of flipping around at this stage of the game because of the place where the divine feminine has reached. This has freed the masculine to not be so grounded, to explore their spiritual side and to explore the spiritual connection because now um, I want to say the divine feminine is balanced enough to hold both aspects and what I'm feeling is the divine feminine with a foot in each world, a foot in the 3D world, a foot in the 5D world, straddling the world so that she can ground herself. And this has freed the masculine to find his own balance. So yeah, your twin is right there, right there with you on a spiritual side. So what is next? <laughs> What's going on in their world? Okay, the two of wands is what is going on in their world right now. So they're doing some future planning. They're trying to figure things out. They're trying to look ahead. We see this man like looking into a crystal ball. He's looking off in the distance. Um, so this is what your person is doing. I feel like they're trying to implement a plan. I also feel like they spend a lot of time thinking about you, thinking about the next step with you or how to get back to you before you know you meet someone else at least this is what they're thinking in their mind but this man is facing to the left and um i feel like this person has to go back to the past in order to move forward so there's like a piece from their past that they're still working on collecting. And I feel like that will be an important piece as far as them moving forward towards you. It's like you have to go back to move forward. But I had two um, Intuit Oracle cards come out with this. And the first one was we are coming into union. And I feel like that goes 
with this card in a lot of ways because again there's this balance there's support but here the divine masculine is supporting the feminine a lot more than here right she has one foot on the ground here so I feel like this is like the next step as far as your energetic balance this is also an 11 11 card or if you were to reduce the numbers it would be two two and we are in that two two gateway this is four and this is four so there's this balance there's this foundation in your connection right now and I feel like you know this person is thinking a lot about a deeper connection with you they want this what we would call union we had this as their central figure for you that they want to have this relationship with you and then we also have oh look at that it's another four card I've been so grounded all my life it's hard for me to trust the spiritual elements of our connection yet I can't deny that they exist okay exactly that your person has been the grounded one and you've been more of the one that was doing the spiritual side or becoming the mystic but this person is way more tuned into that now because you have grounded yourself more your person is now discovering more and more about your spiritual connection and they're acknowledging here that they know there's a spiritual connection they're seeing signs and synchronicities and they can no longer deny that there's something much more connected to you than they first thought when they met you they felt a pull and attraction to you at first but they didn't understand the full connection that you two share in this past life connection so what is this person's next step the first card is the chariot so this person wants to move forward this person I feel is coming towards you and look at this card in this deck this person is they are sure they are certain of where they're going like the, the what I'm hearing is aggressive that's not really the word I want but this person is forcefully moving forward and of course the chariot has to do with balance we always have the black and white horse and that's the balance of the shadow and the light so this person their next step is really reaching a state of balance and they want to move forward from my twin flame messages deck about their next step I get I want to hold you in my arms and feel our bodies unite has one so again this person I feel they want to take this union into the physical with you they want to bring it into the material realm to manifest it now what can you do to help your person contemplation is the card that we have Abelard and Eloise okay so I feel like what you can do to help your person is to be at peace be at peace with this connection think about your person in a positive way he's painting this picture of her and he's doing that from a state of love so you want to watch your vibration you want to use your creative energy you want to stay focused on the loving high vibrational feelings that you have for this person you want to elevate your consciousness we have this mountain in the background which talks about an elevation in thought we also have this violin here that to me that goes with the painting the writing it's like you have to use your creative expression but this is the hermit card 
Okay, so you're spending a lot of time going within and I feel like the reason why you want to do that is to maintain your own balance and high vibration at this time. Remember, like these cards are clearly saying that you and your person are connected and balancing each other's energies. Also message for you is from Sekhmet, which is interesting since this is the Isis and Osiris card. Be strong. You're stronger than you think you are and your strength assures a happy outcome. Again, staying balanced, know your strength, continue to maintain your vibration. And, um, you know, sometimes triggers happen and they're meant to happen. You know, like as Abraham says, the contrast is nothing to fear. The contrast that you might be experiencing is there for a reason. And that's to clear your vibration and bring you to the next level. So when you have contrast, embrace it, but do your best to come back into that state of peace. And that's what you can do to help your person most. What is it that this person cannot see about your connection right now? Beginning at the end. So there's some kind of ending I feel going on for this person. And what they're not seeing is that the ending is actually a new beginning for the two of you. There's, um, there's definitely a shift happening here, happening here and there's a transformation within the energy this card too, this was talking about a past life, the triumph card, that is actually the world as well, which is another card, even though that one's talking about a past life energy, but it's an ending and a completion, or an ending and then a new beginning. Whenever we end something, there has to be something new Something else this person might not see about this connection is that there's perhaps a child involved. And I feel like, well, this could be the creative birth of something, okay? And first of all, I'm gonna put that card down for a moment. First of all, number one, you chose Isis and Osiris. And Isis and Osiris is about the balance and the unification of the masculine and feminine in order to create. Isis integrated the energy of Osiris and from that she gave birth to Horus. So this card is saying like you're giving birth to something new and it may feel like the end. For some of you, maybe you're even with somebody else. And that's really like triggering your person right now. And they may think that it's over, but it's only just the beginning because the two of you are really manifesting something right now. Now for another segment of you, again, take what resonates. There could be, a, again, a, a physical child involved. Maybe your person is having a physical child or they have had a child in the past. And that might be something that is holding your person back. And they may feel like they have to stay there because it's their responsibility. And what they're not seeing about that is that that child is actually their way out. It's, help, it's actually helping them make a new choice in the situation. But they might not see that yet. They might only see the responsibility. They may not see that their children are helping them open their heart or in some way that they can't see. Their children might be helping them come to some sort of balance.
So again, take what resonates, but there's a lot of cards here that deal with creativity, not just Isis and Osiris, but this card as well, the Two of Cups, is the union of the masculine and feminine here, the balance of the masculine and feminine. We're coming into union. These are all creative energies. And this chariot is saying like this person's next step is like a really empowered, forceful, moving forward with something in their next phase. So my, from my deck, what, what they aren't seeing here is you are my true love, my heart, and my soul. Again, number four card. The beginning starts at the end. Life is nothing but cycles. Another way we can interpret this card is this person's old self is ending. This person may not have seen the power of your connection. And maybe it took them getting triggered by the fact that you're with someone else to make them see that they really have feelings for you. They really care about you. And I feel likely they were in some way resisting it. But I feel like they were probably resisting because they weren't fully aware of the spiritual journey, but they're awakening now. And they're seeing these things. So this, this notion that you are their true love is what is coming in to their awareness. It's, it's their coming revelation that they have a responsibility to this connection as well. Like it's not just you that's, you know, I, I know that if you're watching this, you've probably been doing a lot of work to grow and to heal in regards to this connection and doing a spiritual mission, having a purpose. And this person is now acknowledging that they have to take some kind of responsibility as far as purpose here too. What is this person's fear or shadow right now or, or soon to be is transcendence. Okay, so this person, like I said, is learning about the spiritual world. She's very grounded, she's very enclosed, and she's trying to open up and to rise up. And you see her going from solid to translucent. She's leaving the material world and partaking in the spiritual world. So your person is trying to transcend the material world, if you will. And of course, we don't transcend that totally. But yeah, they are definitely experiencing spiritual elements. You know, they can't deny the connection. They're seeing signs and synchronicities. They might be having dreams, visions of you. All of this is pulling them into the 5D. They also say, I feel your energy around me and I wonder if you're thinking of me too. So this is part of their fear. They're, I feel like they're still trying to understand this connection because it's so much more than a material, typical 3D relationships. You have this telepathy. You have this merging of energies that's so powerful. And they feel like your person's trying to understand it and come to terms with it. It might trigger them at times because they've never experienced anything like it. But it's also, you know, moving them along on their journey. I feel very fastly right now. So what are their intentions towards you? The Ace of Cups. Again, new beginning. The beginning starts at the end. They're feeling love for you. Their intention is to heal themselves and to come towards you. Their emotions are building towards you. They are feeling some powerful emotions and those are actually just getting stronger and stronger. 
So um, I feel like your connection with this person isn't done. They also say, I've always felt I had a higher calling in life and our connection brings me more clarity on it. So yes, this person, as I said, they're feeling a responsibility now. They know that your connection is more than just about a romance. It's about changing the world. Love like ours can change the world. And lastly, they say, I can't validate our love in 3D until I understand our spiritual love in 5D. Give me time to explore this aspect so I can be a strong spiritual partner for you. Exactly right. Everything in the, the reading has pointed to the, that your person is just, they love you very much, but they're trying to understand all the spiritual stuff <laughs> that's part of your connection and they need to learn that and they need to learn how to balance the material world and the spiritual world so I feel like when they've reached a certain point they're going to come back to you with a new offer of love so if this reading resonated with you and you would like to continue on Check the description box below for the link over to Vimeo for the extended reading where I'm going to do my usual sacred union reading for the two of you. Or if you would like to have a personal reading with me and delve deeper into your relationship through tarot or astrology, or even through past life regression, please visit my website, which is twinstrology.com. If you liked my oracle cards, the Intuit Twin Flame Oracle, then I will also post the link below. Um, and the Intuit Twin Flame Oracle is also available on Etsy now, as well as on the Intuit Oracle website. But I really appreciate everybody that has bought the cards and supported me and um, yeah, please share them with your friends. If you would like to leave a donation for me as well for this reading, I will put the link to my PayPal below. Of course, I never require you to leave me a donation, but I am grateful for them. Two people did send me donations last month as well, and I want to just send a thank you to them. All right, guys, I'm sending you a lot of love, and I'll see you over on Vimeo. If you chose number two, Cupid and Psyche, then this reading is for you. Just take a moment to think about your person and set the attention that you get the information that you need and that everyone gets a message from this reading. Okay, so we have a lot of cards because this is going to be a very in-depth reading for you all today. And I'm gonna start with this person's feelings towards you right now. The world card, triumph. So this person is really feeling drawn to you right now. This person is feeling a lot of strong emotions to you. This person thinks the world of you. This is the world card in this deck. It's called triumph here. I feel like this person is feeling pulled to you. They want to hold you and they are finding their way back to you. This card has Dionysus and Ariadne on there. And Ariadne, she helps Jason find the Minotaur with her thread. She uses her thread to help him find his way through the maze. So that's why I'm saying like, this person is finding their way back to you. They're using your web, your string to get through the maze. For many of them, it's gonna be the maze of their mind, the maze of their feelings. But they have very deep and intense feelings for you right now. I feel like they want to smell you even because I feel like he's like, he is like um, 
taking in her scent is what I'm getting. I've never actually felt that about this card before, so I feel like there's something about, you know, for you number two, there's something about your smell that your person loves. Maybe it's your perfume or just the natural scent of you that makes them feel safe and at home and they're highly attracted to that. What challenges them right now in their feelings is there's a lesson to be learned from this. So there is something, even though they're feeling pulled to you, there's something that they have to learn. Um, it's like they just can't come forward right now. Although, you know, if you are together with your person, I feel like if you're watching this, there's probably some kind of challenge going on, whether you're together or separated, because there is a lesson here for this person that they're experiencing. So what is the past life energy here between you guys? We've got a few cards here. The first one is love life. Okay, so there's a past life situation around love and I feel like, you know, definitely this card suggests your soulmates or twin flames and you have known each other before, but there's been struggle. This was clarified with the fertility card, the Empress card. This is Cleopatra and Caesar. Well, Caesar died. And so what I feel is in a past life, even though you may have loved each other very much, there was separation, possibly a death that created the separation. So there's a lot of sadness, but there's also a gift, okay? Cleopatra had several of Caesar's children. So, you know, maybe it wasn't a physical child, but there was some gift that you got through this past life connection. It could have been you as well that left the relationship maybe through death. I feel like though in a past life, you probably did have a long relationship and you probably did have children. Let's see, the third card from my deck says, I long ago shut down those parts of me that wanted love, romance, and intimacy, but you make me long for those things again. Okay, so what this person is experiencing from a past life is because they've suffered some kind of grief, and separation with you in the past, they've shut down parts of themselves. Now, this is something that they've experienced in this life too. This person has a lot of inner child wounding that they need to work through. But this person is feeling so strongly pulled towards you that they are trying to create a type of expansion in their love life. They really want to connect with you. Again, like they feel safe with you, I feel. But there's an inner struggle here and there's something about you that's leading them home. But they really are wanting intimacy with you, but I feel like they don't really know how to get it. For some of you, you might really resonate with the story of Caesar and Cleopatra, or perhaps even Caesar and Antony. Not Caesar and Antony, Cleopatra and Antony as well. Or you may have been royalty in another life too, if that resonates. But love here and being open to love is something that's key. And of course, the Empress is about opening to love, opening our heart, um, being the mother, the loving energy. Again, I'm feeling like your twin has inner child wounds and it might be wounds with his mother 
or she, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make it about a male energy, it could be a feminine energy as well. But there's something about your person's connection to their mother, perhaps, that has wounded them and made them afraid to open up. So I feel like this card, this triumph card or this world card is saying that they've got to break through some kind of cycle, some kind of pattern. They've got to end that cycle now and create a new cycle. So what is it that they're healing right now? Ooh, unconditional love. So, yeah. Well, when I first saw this card, I just thought, oh, this person is learning to love. But now after what I was just saying and channeling about mother, then this makes sense. They're healing something with their mother. They didn't feel loved in some way. Or maybe they struggled with their relationship with their mother. Now, if they have a good relationship with their mother, it might be the opposite. They might have a codependent relationship with their mother. But I feel like in some way their mother is controlling. Oh, I've been giving my power away to people in my life. I'm learning to set boundaries. So yeah, the, I feel like their mother either created codependence or their mother perhaps um, doesn't honor their boundaries. Maybe they're a bit controlling, manipulative, or just the type of mother that's like, oh, I know what's best for you. Trust me. Maybe their mother doesn't like you. So, I mean, that's gonna be just one aspect for those of you watching, but that is coming through very strongly that this person needs some inner child healing. They need love and nurturing because whether it's in this life or a past life, I feel they didn't get love and nurturing or they suffered from separation. They suffered from the loss of you. And now it's hard for them to open their heart. So what they're really trying to heal is to open their heart because they so want this with you, but they're, they're afraid. They don't know how to get, get to this place where they can feel the intimate connection with you. So what is going on in their world right now? The Three of Swords. Okay, so this person is really hurting right now. This person is having a lot of emotional turmoil, sadness, grief. I feel like perhaps they need to heal some of this like past life grief that's here or childhood grief. But you can see like with the C's here, there's a lot of emotional turmoil there's lightning, of course, obviously, there's this heart, broken heart. This person, I feel, they're strongly feeling the separation from you right now. And even though you might feel like it's their fault that this separation is happening, there's a lesson here. There's probably a lesson here for you as well something this person has to learn from or grow from. And like I said, they don't know. They don't know how to get this because maybe they've never experienced unconditional love before. And you bringing them unconditional love is triggering them so badly. So I feel like your person wants to come forward, but they don't know how at this point in their journey. Um, let me read this one first. This one came out first. So what's going on in their life right now? I'm triggered. An old pattern has surfaced and it hurts. Absolutely. There's something that's really hurting them right now. And judging by this image, it's separation. They're like, they feel so distant from you. And when I tried to get more clarity about what was triggering them, all I could get was you're projecting your own fears and limitations onto me. Go within and understand that you're seeing yourself, not me. So there's some kind of projection that your person is conflicted about, you know, and they might be blaming you and they might not realize it's a projection. That could be the lesson that they need to go through. 
or they're acting from their childhood wounds and they don't see that. Again, like there's a child here on this card, right? There's a lesson to be learned. It's something from their childhood. I feel that so strongly. So what is this person's next step? The three of wands. So this person is focused on the future. There's some change that's happening. Like this person has set something into motion and now it's coming back. So again, this person may not even realize this, but they wanted something. I feel that what they want is you and they don't realize that they've set something into motion and there's something that is coming that's going to be like guidance for their next step towards you. It might be some kind of revelation about your journey. This wand suit here in this deck is about Egypt. We also have Cleopatra, so you may be connected to Egypt. Or there might be something about, you know, this past life that happened in Egypt and there could be something around that clearing now because something is coming back and I feel like it's connected to this life either there's a healing going on or there's some kind of timeline shift that your person by what they're going through they're shifting this old timeline they're breaking through something and they're connected. So they have to wait for this lesson. I'm trying to connect to you and give you a message. Can you hear me? This person wants to talk to you. If, if you are in communication, they want to be more expressive in what they say. They're not telling you everything. They're not telling you how they feel about you and they want to. But again, they don't know how. They need to break through this old energy. And then that'll make it easier for them to express themselves. But right now they're stuck in some kind of projection about the past. So I just cut the duck here, emerald healing, fertility, eternity, reflection, humility, sexuality, soul restoration, relationship, balance, free-flowing love, heart chakra, mature love. Yeah, this person is doing so much heart healing right now. Their heart was so broken. A lot of times we have past life situations and we have a broken heart, that, that, that kind of energy like cycles through in this life as well. So because you have to clear it. So even though this is coming from this past life, maybe this past life in Egypt, I feel like there was something in your person's childhood that triggered that energy again to make them have to clear it in this timeline. So what can you do to help your person? Five of arrows. Well, what you can do to help is not chase them. Let them go. Their ego was triggered by something that happened. It doesn't really have anything to do with you because it was their own projection that triggered them. So for you to try to chase them or for you to try to, to make them see something, you can't. You have to let them go and you have to let them discover this on their own and sort through it on their own. And that's really hard because you want to help. You want to give them this love, but they can't receive your love right now. They can't receive it until they heal it. So yeah, what you have to do is let go. And also what you can do to heal it is Mary Magdalene, unconditional love. 
Love yourself, others, in every situation, no matter what the outward appearance may be. So yeah, I mean, you may be triggered as well because your twin may have run away from you. You might think your twin's done with you, but you're both just learning this lesson in unconditional love. And what I'm getting from Mary Magdalene is what you could do to help this person is become a vessel. Become an empty vessel. Hold space for this person. You don't need to do the healing for this person. Just step back and hold the vibration of unconditional love because you are inspiring this person. You are teaching this person what unconditional love is. They have never experienced unconditional love, at least not in this lifetime. They might have experienced that in the past with you until they lost you. And then their heart was broken. And subconsciously, they don't want a repeat of that. So they're like, I'm going to stay well away from this person because I don't want to get heartbroken. I don't want this person to leave me like my mother or father did. So hold the vibration of unconditional love and just be there for support, but don't chase. What is it this person can't see about this connection? Doorway to dream time. I don't know how to say that. Madrigata? I wish I knew more about these cards, but I have to go back and like read a lot of Shakespeare and things, fairy tales, in order to, to really know all the details about these cards. And I hope to get around to that someday, but right now I haven't. So, but what I'm getting about this is what this person doesn't see about your connection is you are the doorway to everything they've dreamed about. You know, yes, you are their world. You can like make their dreams come true. This person is processing a lot of their pain in their dream time as well. They may or may not remember it. Um, in fact, because this is something they don't know, they probably don't even remember it when they wake up. But when they're sleeping, the two of you meet and you're guiding them back through their dreams. But yeah, also I feel like you can make all of their dreams come true. And again, that's kind of sounds codependent <laughs> as I'm saying that, like no one can be responsible for everyone's dream. But let me rephrase that and say, you can teach this person what true love is. As I said, this person doesn't know what true love is. And you are the gateway to them understanding that. And in that way, you're making their dreams come true because that's all this person really wants is to feel real love. Look at this, what this person isn't seeing about this connection. My inner child was wounded when my parents couldn't respond to me in the way I needed them to. I'm reacting from that wound. da -dum, projection. As I said, they're not seeing that they're taking what happened with their mother and father and they're projecting it onto you. They think that you're going to leave them, that you're going to abandon them, that you're going to hurt them in some way, or that maybe you're going to choose someone else over them. And that makes them really fearful to come forward. What's this person's fear? Separation. Yep, exactly. They fear losing you so much that they don't want to come forward because they don't even want to take the chance of going through that again. So they stay away. But they watch you on social media. They follow you. They look at your picture and they long for you. And it was just 21, 12 on the counter too. Uh, that's a number I see all the time. Um, that's the winter solstice. Um, so yeah, there could be something connected to the winter solstice for the two of you, the, the upcoming one, which will be 12, 21, 22. Um, 
they are feeling so pulled to you. They want this connection so badly, but they have to go through this healing process or they won't be ready to be that person for you. I long to sweep you off your feet and shower you with my love. This is their fear. They want the intimacy. They want the romance so badly. At the same time, they're afraid of it. Pretty simple. What is this person's intentions towards you in the future? The Eight of Coins. So I feel like this person is dedicated to their healing. Uh, this Eight of Coins often means like a dark night of the soul. Because the Eight of Coins is a blacksmith. And a blacksmith has to heat up metal and pound it. it they forge it into something else. But it can only be forged through fire. So this is telling me that your person is going to walk through fire. They are forging their new self. They're trying to heal all of this stuff in their past so that they can be here for you. So, you know, you may have to be patient a little bit because there's this person still needs to learn a lesson, but know that they're dedicated. I also got this card for their intentions towards you. We are alchemists. We transform fear into love and shadow into light. And this is the same thing, right? He's working, she's working. They're transforming, transmuting, taking something and alchemizing it into something else. So that's what your person is doing. And you're supporting your person in their alchemy here. So very good reading. Um, if you want to go deeper into this reading, if you want to know more, you can look in the description box and find the link to Vimeo. Um, yeah, and just make a small donation in exchange for this reading. I would so appreciate that. Or if you just want to give me a donation. Um, anyways, I will put the link in the box. I so appreciate donations and two people sent me donations last month and I want to just say thank you to them if they're watching this. Um, and yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Happy 222 portal. Sending you all so much love and I hope to see you over on Vimeo. So if you chose number three, Tristan and Isolt, this is your reading. So just take a moment to think about your person and set the intention that you are going to get the message that you need through this reading. And I'm setting the intention that all of you get the message that you need. Okay, so yes, we have a lot of cards here because this is going to be a very in-depth reading about your situation. So let's start with what your person is feeling towards you right now. All right, we have the Ace of Arrows. This would be the Ace of Swords in the Tarot. All right, so what I am hearing is double-edged sword. There's something about your connection that at the moment your person feels like it's a double-edged sword. It's kind of a no-win situation is how they're looking at it right at the moment. I feel like this person has feelings for you, intense feelings, but there's something about these feelings that are hurtful or cutting this person right now. I feel like your person is very conflicted, okay? So they may be feeling very emotional and then very conflicted about those emotions or there's they're needing to cut through something to gain some kind of clarity around this situation. But what I'm getting right now is that like this person is hurting. They feel for you, I definitely get that, but it's also hurting them at the same time. And of course, 
swords deal with communications. So, so this person wants to communicate with you as well, I feel, but I don't think they are at the moment. Or if you are communicating with them, there's something that's going on in your communication that, number one, it's very intense, but it could involve triggers and there may have been like an argument or disagreement or there's something that you can't come to terms with, with each other, you know? So it's like they want to get to some new start, but they've got to cut through some of this turmoil or some of this mental energy. You know, I'm talking here about emotions. I'm saying they're very emotional, but I also feel like there's a lot of mental energy and, and perhaps they're letting the mental energy get too involved in this situation. The mental energy is controlling too much for them. Because, you know, when we're talking about love and we're in our mind, we can't, we can't really understand love with our mind. We have to feel love in our heart. So what is challenging them about their emotions with you right now? Or how they're feeling about you? The challenge with that is I close my eyes and imagine you're here with me and it feels so real. I'm beginning to understand this is what it means to be in the 5D with you. So even though this person has been very mental and they feel like they're trying to get clarity on their feelings for you. I feel like what confuses them is when they let themselves go and they let themselves step out of their mind, they just feel this deep heart commun connection with you. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what is this? And this is actually opening this person's heart, but this person, I feel like perhaps they're in a little bit of resistance because, well, it feels like fear. They're afraid and the fear makes them resist this a little bit. It's like they're not sure if they want to let you in. Let's put it this way, because I said there's like some conflict. It's like the heart wants to let you in, but the mind is afraid to let you in, but man, they're feeling it. They're feeling that deep connection to you. So let's talk about what the past life karma is that's coming up in your situation. Persecution and inquisition. Okay, so now we're starting to get a feel here for what's going on with your person and why they're feeling conflicted. And in another life, they've suffered persecution for something. They've been, um, well, there's been some dark things that have happened to this person. And it's not just persecution, but there's some personal energy here too, like, like just energy of kind of heartbreak with this as well. But they've felt judged. They've felt the sting of judgment and there's something about your connection right now that's triggering them. Um, as far as the timelines, you know, their current emotional or mental state is triggering, triggering them into this other timeline where they have felt this judgment and being persecuted. So this clarifies this. Three of Swords, okay? More of this sword energy, and of course, this is the Heartbreak card. Almost, you know, sometimes you could read this as like existential heartbreak uh, pain, 
death, right? Like this could literally be this person was killed um, or this person was stabbed in the heart in a past life, either literally or metaphorically. And there's something about that that's, you know, whether they're consciously aware of it or not, this is what is causing the inner conflict. Our inner children are crying out right now. We both need to comfort them and become the parents. Yeah. Like that, your person's inner child is really being triggered now into this old energy of feeling judged and lost, abandoned, rejected, heartbroken. That could have been something that happened to this person. They could have been abandoned. Their mother or father could have been executed. They could have been executed. You could have been executed, you know. Um, you could have been burned at the stake. They could have been burned at the stake. You could have been tortured, has... Um, a heretic. All right, sorry, I don't need to go into those details, but I'm just giving you some examples of things that could have happened in your past life that may be triggering this person now. Well, let's go look at the rest of the cards and see if we can get more clarity here. So what is this person focused on healing right now? Achilles, God of vulnerability. So yeah, this person is so afraid to be open because they feel like they're going to be judged. It could be you judging them or it could be they're being judged for their feelings for you. So for some of you, you're going to have a third party relationship, perhaps your person here that you asked about is married or in another relationship and they're worried about how that is going to look to other people or they're worried about breaking their word, breaking someone's heart, all of those things. But, you know, really I feel the biggest thing is this person like they struggle with being open and being vulnerable because they've had this very difficult past life situation where they were judged very, very harshly. And they, they just find it so difficult to let their guard down now. Now from my deck, what we got as far as what they're healing, two cards came out. The first one is... I'm tired of being away from you physically. I'm trying to process my fears so I can come back to you. So this person, as I said, they do have feelings for you. They do want to see you again. They do hope for a new beginning. But it's like a fear. There, there's so much fear that is being triggered in them right now. And it's the energy. It's this 222 portal that we're in. Um, you know, things that we're holding on to, we have got to let go of them now because we're moving into the next stage of ascension where we are manifesting things rapidly. And if we're very harshly critical of ourselves or we fear other people's judgment, that creates a big limitation. So this person is right now in the process of healing this this fear of being vulnerable and letting you back into their life. Also what came out here is I need to be strong in who I am before I can merge my energy with yours in the 3D. I'm afraid I could lose myself in this relationship. But I think what's important here is this man is running away. So what this person is trying to heal is they've been running away from you. And again, it's because of this energy, this old heartbreak energy. 
And there's definitely something about that that needs to be cleared to make way for for your connection. And I feel like they really want you to know, like, if they are running from you, it's not because of you. It's not because they don't have feelings for you. It's really fear-based for them. So make sure that you don't internalize what is happening with them. Although it's very likely that on some level you were involved in this situation somehow. So what is going on in this person's life right now? The Five of Cups. Okay, so again, this card suggests that there's a third party involved here. This person might be taken or you might be taken already. You might have already been in relationships when you met. Or since you've separated, one of you has made a commitment to someone else. And this person is feeling very restrained by this energy. And the universe is asking them to wake up. The universe is asking them to let go of the past here, to let go of what is over and done and focus on the things that could be. You know, there's no reason to cry. Don't cry over spilt milk. In this case, don't cry over spilt wine. But this person, it's like they can't right now they're in like a mental loop and they're just having a difficult time letting these thoughts go. And I feel like, you know, the biggest thing here is losing you. Like they're very torn up because they're afraid to lose you and yet they're afraid to come forward at the same time. So it's, it's like they're twisted up in knots. So let's see what the clarifiers were here. Clarifiers for the Five of Cups. Past lives are influencing our connection. I've lost you in other lifetimes and that makes me afraid. I need to heal the grief to allow this love to bloom. Yeah, so definitely this person is clarifying this for you. The feelings that they're going through they don't want you to internalize it because it's just this past life energy. And they're saying that you were there. You were part of this. You were part of why they're afraid. They're afraid to lose you again. They don't want to go through that, that experience and that other life of losing you was so traumatic. It like cut their heart open. And they don't want to go through that again. What I'm hearing is that it took away their innocence, that lifetime, that loss. It took away their innocence. And it made them see the world in a much harsher place, has a much harsher place. Also as a clarifier, judgment reversed. This is 20, <laughs> number two, we're in the 222 portal. Even though this is a timeless reading, two might be a number that is important to you whenever you're watching this, okay? But the judgment card, okay? Like just think of the actual name of the card, judgment. They're stuck in this feeling of judgment. And this card in this deck, which is the tarot apocalypsis, the image here is of the great flood. And this card talks about this feeling of being punished, being judged. God judging us, his humans, and saying, you know, you need to go and destroying the bad humans in the flood. But we have to rise above this. We have to rise above the material world and we have to enter the spiritual world. This is what this judgment card is about. Like you leave the material world and you connect with your higher power. You reconnect with source. But this person has it reversed. So I feel like they're really stuck right now 
and this energy of judgment and they don't feel they don't feel worthy they don't feel like they're worthy of your love they may not even feel worthy of god's love and it's like they're punishing themselves is what i'm getting they feel so bad they feel so guilty okay it might have been their fault you know perhaps like i said you were the one that was executed and maybe they felt the sting of blame for that in some way. Maybe they couldn't protect you. And they are internally, subconsciously rather, because for most of them it's gonna, a lot of this will be subconscious. They're feeling like they are judging themselves and they can't let go of that. And again, for those of them those of you who have these third party situations, okay, this person feels so bad. They're just like, like they're allowing their heart to be broken all over again because they're like, they don't know what to do. And they're just judging and criticizing themselves very harshly at the moment. So it's interesting here because we have this Ace of Swords is like the central theme here. And I always see the Ace of Swords as needing to cut through something, to cut cords. Like, I want the fresh start. I have to cut cords. So your person is trying to find a way to cut cords with the past and cut cords with this fear. Now, look at Achilles as well. Achilles, of course, a great warrior, and he has his sword by his side. For some of you, this lifetime may have happened in Greece or have some connection to Greece, but not all of you, because we have a couple different things going on here. This, this theme, you know, this theme of the flood has many, the story of the flood and judgment is told in many different cultures. We have this um, 18th century, like French looking couple as well. But you know what's interesting is the lovers that you chose at the beginning was Tristan and Isolt. And Tristan and Isolt were caught in a third party situation. They loved each other and yet Tr Isolt rather was married to King Mark and so you know, they had an affair, but they judged themselves for it. Tristan was meant to be this honorable knight. So um, because you chose that as a theme, again, that kind of speaks to me like there's some kind of third party energy here and some kind of judgment going along with it. So what is this person's next step? The Six of Cups. Here's Greece on here again. Um, so again, Greece might resonate with some of you. Okay, Six of Cups is a good card. It's about love. It's about rekindling love. Now this is a love that usually it's shown has children, right? It's a pure love, an innocent love. But remember, this person has told you like, in that past life where they lost you, that stole their innocence. So their next step is to find their innocence again, to reconnect with their heart and to reach out to you. Here's this girl, she's like reaching out to the boy. This is like love, love returning. Love from long ago returning. I'm just trying to see closer what's like some of the details on this card. It's flowers on here. There's gods and goddesses. The cups are growing flowers. I mean, flowers are a real theme here. And I think it stands, you know, with this card where we have these roses and these vines. I'm not sure what those vines are. But remember I said like this was like their purity was taken away, their innocence because of these white flowers. Here the flowers are returning. So 
Yeah, I feel like this person is really wanting to reconnect with you. It's not the right card. This is. <laughs> They also say, I've always had a, felt I had a higher calling in life, and our connection brings me more clarity on that. Well, I feel like you, your energy is calling to them. Your light is calling to them. It's calling to them to let go of this. Let go of judging themselves so harshly. I feel like you're helping them find their innocence again. What you can do to help this person on their journey right now. Please send me energetic support. Use the frequency of love to uplift me because I need your help. Yeah, your person is going through a dark night of the soul. Um, a lot of these readings are connecting to that kind of energy for the person that we're reading for. Um, what you can do to help this person is be at peace meditate, stand to your truth, stand to what you want to manifest. If you love this person and you want to be with this person, you need to stand by them in truth and love. And, you know, it's not like you necessarily have to send healing towards them, do a healing session for them. I mean, you can if you're called to, but all you really need to do is stay balanced, stay calm, stay in peace, and stay in that vibration of love because that love is calling them back. Also, what you can do, we have Mau Mauu, Mother Earth. You are called upon to help with environmentalism. Well, <laughs> that's not really what I'm getting here. What I'm getting is ground yourself. Be very grounded, get outside in nature, connect to the earth. If you can go to the mountains, go to the mountains. Just get outside. Maybe just connect with Gaia in general. There might be some messages there. I'm feeling like continue to raise your vibration is really like all you need to do right now. What is next? What can they not see about this connection right now? Somehow I got these mixed up. Temptation. The beast within is what they can't see right now. So, again, we have these little children, but there's this witch. This is like Hansel and Gretel, I think. So, there's definitely this temptation to come towards you, but something is in the way, and they're struggling with that. But yeah, it's like, to me, I'm almost seeing this as like the devil card. But this is coming from within them, the beast within. It's like, again, that inner judgment, that inner pain is what's inside. It's like they've internalized the judgment that they've experienced in the past. And at times it wants to take over them. Somehow they're, they're not making the full connection between all of this yet, but they're getting activated. When I look into your eyes, I see the universe and it activates me. So what they can't see perhaps is that they're going through a clearing, an activation and a clearing around this energy. Again, they may not be consciously aware of this depending on where they are in their journey. Or they might be. They might be getting activations to connect with this energy. I mean, a lot of people are waking up now and really surprising us in the things that they can grasp and understand nowadays. So what is their fear or their shadow right now? <laughs> this is their biggest fear right now. The God of love. 
So, you know, they're still in this heartbreak. They're afraid. Like, do I open up? Do I try to communicate? Do I try for a new beginning? They're, they're very afraid that their heart's going to be broken. They're afraid that their offer is not going to be accepted because he's, he's wanting to make this offer to you. Of course, it's a dead rabbit. <laughs> Probably not something that you want. But there is this energy here of, you know, everybody shows love in a different way. And it's like recognizing the way other people show love. So maybe for you, you might want to think about how this person may have shown you love in the past and maybe you didn't even pick up on it because it might not be the way that you show love or do love, but you know, you needed to see something about this person and what they're going through. Their fear. I feel the chemistry between us. We need to trust that the energy we share will bring us back together again. This person feels so strongly for you, but you know, at the same time, they're afraid. I wonder, is something about the color red? Because they both have like red robes on. Could be lower chakra energy. Of course, fear is connected to the root chakra. But this person is feeling pulled for you, pulled towards you, and I think it scares them how strong their feelings are for you and makes them a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. Okay, so what is this person's intentions towards you? Strength. Brunhilda and Siegfried. So I feel like this person is trying to find their strength and they're trying to move through this energy of judgment. They're trying to let it go. Um, they're trying to overcome so of, some of that lower energy, might be lower sexual energy, which is what perhaps this red is about. I mean, I definitely feel like they have passion for you. That's not the, the issue, but I feel like the physical feelings that they feel for you is almost what is making them judge everything. Because maybe they, they don't feel right, perhaps, or they don't feel honorable. It's not that they only have sexual feelings for you. But right now, I feel like the passion for you is pretty high. The desire to, to have you physically. And, um, well, I mean, just in general, we have to transmute that lower sexual energy and take it into a higher place. I want to know everything about you, but I hold myself back from asking. I'm afraid I'll get in too deep. So that's what this person's intentions are. As, as we know, this person is afraid. The reason why they don't come forward is they know if they let you in too much, <laughs> then they feel that love for you and they're so afraid of that love. I was saying, this card came up in all three of the readings somewhere, and I was saying in, in reading number one, in the extended version, how a lot of times when you're in a twin flame scenario, your divine masculine can act really weird sometimes. And you could have like an hour long conversation with them and they would never ask you one question about themselves or about yourself. This is kind of what prompted me because everybody that I've ever talked to on the journey has experienced that. It's like your twin, they won't even go far enough to ask about you because 
they're so afraid that if they know too much about you that they're going to get sucked in and they're going to fall in love with you. So they keep themselves very blocked up, very guarded. They keep their armor on and part of that is I don't want to get too close to you here. But if there's a third party involved, involved as well, this person may also be feeling that. Like, I don't want to... What I'm hearing is, I don't want to drag you into this. I don't want to drag you into my mess. Even though I care about you. Like, I want this to be done right. I mean, think about that night energy again. Tristan, um, the myth of them, Tristan and Isolt. Your person wants to do this in an honorable way, is what I'm feeling, and that's why that sexual energy can at times make them uncomfortable because it feels like, you know, they're not being honorable, and then they go into self judgment. So I wanted to ask, like, is this person going to come forward because this wasn't really clear as far as their intentions? And it was funny because when I asked, were they going to come forward towards you? I got these two cards. The first one is, I'll contact you when I'm able to. Right now, my life is too complicated to bring you into it, but know that I do want to talk to you. So again, this suggests that there's more going on to this story there's probably a third person or some other situation that is distracting your twin or that your twin or person knows they have to resolve that before they can come back to you with full truth, fully in their truth of what they feel for you. As well as I feel I don't deserve your love, I'm worried you'll leave me when you see who I really am. You know, when people judge themselves, they think other people are judging them. And I feel like your person thinks that you judge them as well. And they're so afraid of your judgment and that you are going to think less of them in their eyes that, yeah, they do run away because they don't want to feel that sting from you of all people because they care about you so much. And that's also why like they, they hide their vulnerability. It's like, I don't want you to see who I am because I mean, they, they right now, they have a pretty low opinion of themselves. So I feel like that's one of the reasons why, you know, if, why they're keeping you at a distance, but give them time and they will come forward. But if you want to really know more, if you're resonating with this reading, then follow me over to Vimeo. So the link will be in the description box. I hope that you follow me over there. If you want to know more about the Intuit Twin Flame Oracle written by me, I'll put the link to that. The um, Twin Flame Oracle is now available on Etsy as well as from the Intuit Oracle website. So if that's easier for you, you can search it on Etsy. So if you would like to send me a donation as well, I will put the link to that below. I really appreciate your donations. Um, I did have two people send me donations last month and I just want to say thank you to them if they're watching. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I hope that you guys will follow me over to Vimeo and continue with this reading. But if not, thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment if this reading resonated with you and let me know. And I'll speak to you again real soon.